Greetings. Uh, my name is Joe Osborne. I'm here on behalf of Pioneer International. I actually have a lot of familiarity with your background. I met my wife at uh, one of your optometry schools, and I actually sat in the lab chairs all through her uh, second and third year until she graduated and actually became an optometrist. One of the things that uh, we went through together was trying to figure out what a diagnostic set is, why do we need these things, how to spell a thalmoscope, um, and, and how to use them. So briefly, we're going to walk through the different instruments and discuss how you use the ophthalmoscope, retinoscope, the handles, and what. Yeah. One thing's for certain is your school has made sure that the manufacturers of these instruments that are here are reputable companies. They will take care of you. That's one thing you can be. Uh, you can. That's one thing that's guaranteed. Now, what's most important is how do these things feel in your hands? How do you operate them? Now the retinoscope, if you talk to a lot of your practicing uh, optometrists out there, they're going to tell you oh, it's a little bit of a dying art. It's something that if you do have the ability to go on a mission trip your third year, and do go if you can, you will become a retinoscope king or queen, if you will. The retinoscope is what we get our, how we can tell what our refractive error is. And again, to use it, all we do is place it right back on to the head and twist, and then again turn on. On the back of the retinoscope, what you're going to notice is you have a filter, a polarizing filter. What happens is you will get a glare. And if you do get that glare, you need to be able to knock that down so you can see what's going on with the beam of light that's coming out. So what is coming out of the retinoscope? It's going to be a straight beam that follows out. And you're going to rotate it with this sleeve. And you want the sleeve to be able to maneuver and rotate and stop as soon as you let go. The only other piece on the retinoscope that you need to be aware of is going to be cleaning it. And does it have sealed optics or not? All these instruments that I'm showing right now, they do. Wow. So with the retinoscope, one of the instruments or one of the pieces of equipment that you'll be buying is going to be called a trial lens set. When you use the retinoscope, they'll be wearing some frames and you'll be bringing the line through the lens and you'll be using the trial lens set to get the refractive error. All you're doing is trying to neutralize the beam. You'll hear that over and over again. And that's what the trial lens set will be for. Again, if you're getting a lot of glare, it's nice to have a polarizing filter to activate, which is located on this instrument. With the retinoscope, you also want to make sure that it's something you can get around easily. And then also, how do you maintain this? Again, it's got sealed optics, so you can take a lens cloth and clean off the edges. You really don't want to use anything real moist inside uh, the retinoscope. The lamps, just like the ophthalmoscope, again, are located on the bottom. One of the nice things about the retinoscope, whenever you're using it, is you want to make sure that this focusing sleeve is easy to get to. This one happens to be a completely external focusing sleeve, uh, which makes it really nice to rotate. These need to rotate 360 degrees, and most all manufacturers have that ability.